up next on Hudson Church. Thank you. Thank you that your promises still stand. His promises still stand. Hallelujah. His promises still stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The only thing that's going away is the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to continue to talk about, amen, a new order has come. And it's interesting, amen, because a new order has come. And it came over 2,000 years ago, amen, when Jesus came and was walking on the earth. Jesus is the new order, amen. And when he re resurrected from the dead, we became the new order. We became the new class of people, amen, in Jesus' name. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians don't realize and don't know, amen, that they're new creations in Christ Jesus, amen, that, that sin doesn't have dominion over them any longer, Amen. That they're new creations in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so that's why God wants us, amen, to be able to continue, amen, not only to teach the word of God, amen, but walk in the word of God. Amen. Be doers of the word. Be believing believers. Amen. Because there's a lot of unbelieving believers. Amen. And it's just not, you know, people say, I'm a believer. No, I'm a believing believer. Amen. Because that's what Christ has called us to be. Believing believers manifest and demonstrate, amen, the Christ in them in Jesus' mighty name. So, again, we want to talk about let go of the ancient man. Some of us are still holding on to that ancient man. I want you to go with me over to Galatians chapter 1, amen, Galatians chapter 1. And it says this, and, I ha and, and you have heard how I outstripped. Many of the men of my own generation among the people of my race in my advancement in study and observance of the laws of Judaism, so extremely enthusiastic and zealous I was for the traditions of my ancestors. And this is Paul talking. Verse 15. But when he, talking about Jesus, who had chosen and set me apart even before I was born. See, God set you apart even before you were born. God had a plan for you. There's a plan for your life. Unfortunately, the devil has a plan for your life too. But what plan are you going to listen to? Who's going to believe the report? That's what, that's what Isaiah said. That's what Jesus said. Who's going to believe the report? Are you going to believe the report, amen, that the world is saying? Or are you going to believe the report that the Spirit of God is saying? Who cannot lie? <laughs> Amen. The world is full of lies. Amen. The world was, is, 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 walks according to lies. And God's word is true. God's word is absolute reality. It says, by his grace, he called me by his grace, his undeserved favor and blessing, saw fit and was pleased. God saw fit and he's pleased in calling you out. Verse 16 says this. To reveal, unveil, disclose his son within me. See, God wants to reveal, not only reveal, but he wants to unveil it. See, a lot of times, amen, Jesus in the church, Jesus is just revealed in the church. Jesus is just revealed in you, but he wants to be unveiled. He wants to come out. He wants to be made manifest, amen, and that's why he's chosen you and I to do that. And those of you that are listening, he's chosen you. You might not realize it. You might not know it, but thank God by the Spirit of God this day, amen, your eyes of your understanding are going to be enlightened, and you're going to be able to see in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your purpose in life. He said, uh, undisclose his son within me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, the non-Jewish world, as the glad tidings, the gospel. See, the gospel, amen, is Jesus being revealed in you. It's not just in handing out tracts. It's manifesting the Christ in you, in love, amen, in blessings, in helping people, in hugging people, amen. That's what the gospel is all about. And he said, the glad tidings, the gospel, immediately I did not confer with flesh and blood. And that's what happens sometimes. We start to confer with flesh and blood. Where flesh and blood didn't reveal to you who you are. It comes by the Spirit of God. Only the Spirit of God can reveal to you who the Christ is. Amen. So when we get that, let's stay with that. Let's stay with the Spirit of God. Let's not confer. Well, what do you, well, what do you think? And we ask, you know, Brother Squat Doodley, what does he think? Oh, we ask Sister Big Mouth, what does she think? Amen. Well, why not confer, amen, with the person who revealed to you who you are? Amen. And that's the Holy Ghost, just in case you didn't know it. 
It says, immediately I did not confer with flesh and blood. I did, did not consult or counsel with any frail human being or communicate with anyone. Amen? Verse 17. Nor did I even go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles, special, mes special messengers of Christ before I was. But I went away and retired into Arabia. And afterwards I came back again to Damascus. See, sometimes you need to get away and you need to get away alone. Amen. Yes, it's nice. I thank God for the fivefold ministry gifts, but you know what? Amen. The Holy Ghost, amen, was the one who called those five people, those people, the fivefold ministry, amen, into, amen, into the, and into the church, amen. But the Holy Spirit can let you know things, amen, that they don't know because the Holy Spirit knows what you're called to do, amen. And sometimes we're doing what somebody else is you know, we're watching and seeing what somebody else is doing, amen. And when you do that, you're only doing and having and operating in secondhand knowledge. It said in reveal knowledge. And that's what Paul said. I didn't go, hey, these people walked with Jesus. But you know what? I received revelation of who Jesus was. Not, look, Paul said, I was a man caught up into heaven. I can't speak of all those things. But it didn't mean he wasn't operating in all those things. He saw who we are, amen, more so, amen, than the disciples saw because they just saw the physical Jesus. He saw the resurrected Jesus. He was able to see who he was, not who Jesus was, but who he was because of Jesus. And that's what he wants us to experience, that resurrection life. That's what changes things in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go with me over to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I thank God my brother, amen, uh, Minister Nadid, he ministered this, you know, in Spanish. And it says, so with the wisdom given to me from the Lord, I say you should not live like the unbelievers around you who walk in their empty dis delusions. Amen. amen. They're delusional. Amen. amen. And if you hang around with them, you're going to become delusional. Verse 18. Their corrupt logic. Wow, I must have read 18 really fast. Let's go, let's go back. That Holy Ghost is something else. <laughs> He's real quick. Sorry, Holy Ghost, I'm going to catch up. All right. Their corrupt logic has been clouded because their hearts are so far from God. Amen. If your heart is so far from God, you're going to be clouded. Amen. You're going to, be a, you're going to walk in a dark cloud. You're going to be a dark cloud. Amen. It says their blinded understanding and deep-seated moral darkness keeps them from the true knowledge of God. Amen. Again, if you're walking according to the world system, amen, what happens is your mind is going to be so clouded, amen, that you're not going to know the true knowledge of God. Verse 19. Because of their spiritual apathy, they surrender their lives to lewdness, impurity, and sexual obsessions. The reason if you don't have knowledge of God, you're going to walk according to the world. What causes you not to walk according to the world is your knowledge of God, of who you are in Christ, of your identity. Verse 20. But this is not the way of life that Christ has unfolded within you. Christ has unfolded and put something in you, and you just got to look in. It had, someone said this, amen, that to look outside is to dream, and to look within is to awaken. And that's what we need to do. We need to awaken to who we are in Christ. Verse 21. If you have really, really, if you have really experienced the anointed one and heard his truth, it will be seen in your life. <laughs> hey, if you can't see it, amen, then it's because he hasn't been revealed to you. You got to come out of, from behind the closet. You need to come out of the rocks. Amen. The people that need to come out of the closets is the Christians. Amen. The real supermen of this world. Too many times the believers are walking around like Clark Kent, still working their regular nine to five job, still being involved, amen, in the circular, and you need to come out, amen, of that outfit and get into the real person that God created you to be in Jesus' name. Yeah, so we can fly around, amen, in Jesus' name. Where nothing can harm us. 
It says, it will be seen in your life, for we know that the ultimate reality is embodied in Jesus. Who you really are is Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. Verse 22. And he has taught you to let go of the lifestyle of the ancient man. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. You need to let that old caveman go. Amen? Amen. That ancient man. The old self-life, which was corrupted by sinful and deceitful desires that spring from delusions. Delusions. Amen. Amen. I want to go over to Matthew chapter 10. We're going to jump. I want to go to Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. My pastor's always saying this. And what happens at times is we need to find out the meaning of what the words that someone is speaking to us, especially the words that come from here, amen, are being said to you so that you have understanding of what's happening. Pastor always says this. And when I say it, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because if I ask people to raise their hand, there would be few many hands raised. We don't want to embarrass people here. We want you to know the truth. And this day you're going to learn more about when you hear that saying, you're going to know what the word of God is saying. And Jesus said this himself. He said this, behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wills. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And everybody says, yes, amen. And then they go back and they're thinking, why would he say be wise as a serpent? A serpent wasn't anybody good. He didn't say be a serpent. He said be wise as a serpent. Be wise as a snake. Well, why did Jesus say that? It's because, amen, snakes are careful. They move Slowly, they move in a new territory, they stay low, they stay quiet, they blend into the environment, they evaluate the situations to see when is the right opportunity to strike. And that's how we have to be like believers. Sometimes as believers, we want to open up our mouth and we need to keep our mouth shut. Sometimes we don't want to blend in. We want to stand out. The way you stand out is by blending in so that this way they can see, amen, that you're different. Amen? They evaluate. They're sensitive to the spirit. See, Christians don't want to evaluate. They don't want to be sensitive to the spirit. And that's why he says, be wise. You know, as I was looking in the word of God, amen, the only, see, when God created the heavens and the earth, amen, he then turned around and made Eden. Eden was just kind of like a vacation place for Adam and Eve. That's where they lived in Eden. Amen. If you look at uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, and, verse, and then you look at verse 15, amen, that God made a specific place, amen, for Adam and Eve. And it's interesting, amen, that the only animal, amen, that you read about that went into the garden, amen, was a serpent. And we know that the serpent, amen, knew what to be able to say to Eve. Why? Because he had been moving around in, in the garden. And, 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 and actually, when he was moving around in the garden, I went like this, but he was standing up. Amen? But the word of God says that he was the most craftiest of all the animals that God had made. And he knew how to, you know, because, see, there's people that are crafty. You know, thank God that we're crafty people. That was a good time for you guys to say amen. Because if you're not crafty, then the enemy is going to get over on you. Amen? But the enemy is not as crafty as we are. Amen? Why? Because we have the spirit of God. We have the wisdom of God. But the serpent was able, he was probably going around and he was listening to things that Adam and Eve were saying. And it's interesting, and I said this once before, Satan waited till Eve came before he came and tempted them in Jesus' name. Because Adam had been there. He could have came and tempted Adam. But you know what? He said, I want to get the family. And that's what the devil tries to do. He wants to get your family. But he can't have our family in Jesus' name. Amen? Because God has the family already. Amen? Hallelujah. But, but the serpent was, was cunning. And that's what we need to be. We need to be, we need to be cunning. 
We need to know. We need to be crafty. We need to know how to walk in this world. Amen? The Word of God says we're in this world, but not of this world. But we need to walk, you know what I mean, that according to that we're not in the world so that we, the world doesn't affect us, but we're affecting the world in Jesus' name. Amen? Look at, um, look at Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. You know, uh, in church, TV app brings you live services direct to your smartphone, smart TV, and much more. You'll also get special announcements, streaming messages, and exclusive content 24 hours a day, right in the app. Experience unlimited streaming through streaming platforms absolutely free. Visit your app store or download the Hudson Church app through PushPay. For more information, go to facebook.com forward slash the Hudson Church. Sister Julie, uh, Minister Julie ministered uh, last Sunday. She said, you know, I, you know uh, and as you know, I, I, I ministered probably it was close to, you know, six months to a year, you know what I mean, on, on, you know, warfare, spiritual warfare. You know what I mean? And the reason that the Spirit of God had me minister on that, amen, is because he wanted us to have a spiritual, amen, and a militaristic mentality. See, too many of us, you know what I mean, you know, we just, you know what I mean, you know, just going through, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips, you know what I mean? And we think, you know, hey, you know, uh, I'm just, you know, uh, yes, I, I'm a Christian, you know what I mean? But I'm also, you know, I do this and I do that. And what ends up happening, we're doing more of the this and that than being a Christian, than being Christ-like. Amen? And so what ends up happening, amen, is that we need to develop, amen, again, that warlike mentality. And we don't have it. The church, look, the church is an army. And when you hear Paul talking about it, he said, I salute you. Well, why would Paul say that? You know what I mean? Because he saw, amen, that, that, the, that the body of Christ, amen, was an army. Amen? And what ends up happening, and we're soldiers. Jesus was a soldier. We're soldiers in this army. Amen. And as soldiers, amen, we need to learn, amen, how a soldier in the body of Christ is, how he acts, how he does things. Amen. Because if you don't, amen, you're going to have a mentality just like the world, amen. And if you don't know that you're in a warfare, amen, then you're going to lose, amen, because the devil's going to beat you. We're just not passing through here, amen, you know, to uh, accomplish, you know, all those things, you know, to be the, you know, the, the, the greatest lawyer, the greatest doctor. Thank God that we can do that, amen, but that's not what God called you to be. I'm the greatest developer, yes, and you know what? Then use that development that God has given that ability to develop the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you say you're a teacher, then use that ability, amen, to teach in the name of Jesus the believers in the body of Christ, amen, and just don't say, hey, you know what, I do this all week, so now I don't want to do it, you know what I mean, uh, on the weekends. Are you kidding me? Then that means you're doing it because you're getting paid and you don't want to do it for Jesus. Amen. amen. That talent that he gave you is to be used in the body of Christ for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And if you get tired, amen, it's because you're leaning on your own understanding, amen, because it says that the joy of the Lord is your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we, 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 we need to make, you know, get back, amen, and, and focus, amen, on what we were called to do. I mean, you know, if, if oh God, if, if we were, you know what I mean, in, in the early church, amen, some of us would already defected. Because the pressure that was put on them, amen, the things that they had to endure, amen, we probably would have said, nah, man, that's a, that's a little too much. Hey, we ask people to come to two services. We ask them to come to intercessory prayer, amen? And it's like, nah, I don't know, I need to sleep a little longer. Yeah, and as long as you're sleeping, amen, the devil's just working all over you. No, you, 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 wouldn't, have made, you wouldn't have made it. You would have quit. Amen, you would have quit. Because the way, amen, that the soldier is, amen, a soldier knows, amen, he's been called to battle. He's been called to warfare. Amen. Not to take vacations. And I'm not against taking vacation. Amen. But people's lives are a vacation. Amen. And we, we, we need to start zeroing in, amen, on what God has called us to do. Because we need to wrap this thing up. And, and, you know, it's not, oh, I'm waiting on God. God's waiting on us. 
Amen. For the enemy to be made, you know, our footstool. He is already, amen, but to be made, amen, so that he's under the church. He said he's coming back for a glorious church, not a weak church, not a weak church that's saying, come quickly, Jesus, so you don't know, oh, you don't know what I'm going through. Oh, stop your sniveling. Amen. Amen. That's not the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, is not so anxious about Jesus coming because he knows, amen, that when Jesus comes, there's a lot of lives that are going to be lost. Amen. They're praying, amen, that the eyes of the understanding of the unbelievers are open, amen, so that they can be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth because Jesus has already paid the price for them, amen, and he loves them. And God, amen, is not, you know, anxious or he's not happy when people are dying and going to hell. Amen. He don't take no pleasure in that. And, ain't that, and again, I want to say this. It's not that he's sending anybody to hell. People are making a decision not to go to heaven. But you know what? By the time we end this, amen, you're going to have an opportunity, amen, to make a choice, amen, to go where God created you to go, amen, and that's to heaven because his word says that hell was created for, his, for Satan and his angels. It wasn't created for us. But you know what? If you want to play follow the leader, if your leader is Satan, if Satan is your Lord, you're going to go where he's going. And I guarantee you, and I'll let you know, amen. And some people say, well, I don't believe in hell. You can believe that you don't believe in hell all you want. But you know what? Hell is a real place. And without Jesus, you're going you're gonna to hit head first, amen, in Jesus' name. But you don't have to. You don't have to. That's a good news. It's a good news. You don't have to. Because he paid the price in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So again. So, my son, throw yourself into this work for Christ. Amen. Amen. And, and, and it's kind of like, this is, this is my son, you know, this is like a, an endearment. Paul had this love for Timothy, and he said, Timothy, throw yourself into the work of Christ. Verse 2, pass on what you heard from me, the whole congregation saying amen. Amen. He said to reliable leaders who are competent to teach others. Reliable leaders. Another translation says faithful leaders. Amen. Did you notice he didn't say qualified leaders? Not everybody that's qualified is faithful. Oh, you'll hear people talk about how qualified they are. And where are they? Oh, my. No. Again, faithful people. Amen. Competent people that are going to what? Teach others. Amen. Teach others how to be faithful because that's what God wants. You know, God can't teach people to be faithful. That has to come out of you. Amen. And God wants you. You know what I mean? Again, he says that reliable people, faithful people, Timothy. You know what? Timothy was, was a little scared and a little nervous. You know why? Because they had thrown Paul in prison. Amen. And then they killed Paul. They crucified Paul. Amen. They beheaded Paul. And Timothy said, wow, after, you know, these people are going to know I've been hanging out with him. You know, that's why sometimes people don't want to hang around with true believers, with believing believers, because, you know, I, I don't want people to know that I'm a part of them. That's just like Peter did. You know what I mean? Peter, you know, knew that if he said, oh, yeah, I am one of those, and he said he was going to be one of those, but it's one thing to say it is another thing to do it. But he, they knew, he said, oh, yeah, three times he said, I don't even know that dude. Why? Because he knew, amen, that being associated with Jesus, amen, was meant, and it could mean death. And that's what Timothy, so Timothy was running scared. And Paul had to encourage Timothy. Why do you think, see, a lot of times when we read this, why do you think that Paul told Timothy, I haven't given you, that God hasn't given you the spirit of fear? Why, 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 why would Paul tell that to Timothy? Because Timothy was fearful. But you know what? He probably naturally had a right to be fearful. They were killing the Christians. Hey, Amen. You know, in, in other countries, they're killing the Christians. Hey, Amen. That's happening right now in this world, in this t- time. Hey, Amen. You know what happens though here, you know, in this Western world, you know, we're pretty chill. You know, I don't really get persecuted. You know, yeah, sometimes my wife might say something about me, but that's okay. You know, sometimes my husband might say something. You know, sometimes the neighbors might not like it. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I get out in, in, in the middle and I'm saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for this day. They might not like that. 
but they're not going to persecute you. They're not going to behead you. They're not going to, you know what I mean, uh, uh, throw you in prison. But that's what was happening back then. So Timothy was fearful, amen, and Paul had to encourage him. He said, and, and a lot of his leaders, you know what I mean, bit the dust. A lot of the leaders were leaving, but who cares, amen? They were never there to begin with, Amen. You know, I, 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 Pastor, there's a lot of people, you know, that come to Hudson Church and they say, oh, yeah, Pastor, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm going to be there with you. Yeah, you know what I mean? When the rapture comes, we're going to do all of these things together. You know what I mean? It's like, where are those people? Amen. You know, God, God, God doesn't get over enthusiastic with lip service. God is a God of action. God is a show me God. Amen. You say you have faith. I want to see it. Don't talk about it. Show me. Show me by your work. Show me by what you're doing in Jesus name. Amen. So look at uh, verse three. When the going gets rough, take it on the chin with the rest of us the way Jesus did it. See, Timothy was, didn't want to take it on the chin. Paul took it on the chin. You know, a lot of people think that Paul didn't have faith because of everything that he faced. No, let me tell you something. He needed faith in order to face everything he faced. Amen? You know, any of those times that they stoned him, any of those times that they flogged him, amen, any of those times that they, you know what I mean, that, that he was uh, uh, shipwrecked, any of those times that they were after him, he could have turned around and said, I guess this is my lot in life. I guess this is what I'm going to die. I mean, listen, when they stoned you to death, it wasn't that they threw pebbles there on you. First of all, they threw you from a cliff head first. And then they threw boulders on top of you. So you didn't leave that place alive. Amen? Well, the apostle Paul did. Amen? You know why? You know why? Because he said, I'm not done yet. Just shook off his clothes. I'm not done yet. My work isn't finished yet. So I was like, God, why did this happen to me? I was faithful. I died. I went down to church. Maybe not all the time, but I did. Oh, boo-hoo. No. The thing is this, is Paul realized, amen, no, I'm not through yet. I'm not done yet. I still got work to do. Amen. But the devil's going to make you think that your work is over. And he'll put, you know what I mean? Look, there's, there's people in COVID. Look, COVID came, COVID hit a lot of us. Amen. But you know what? We're still here. You know why? Because COVID isn't greater than the Jesus and the Christ in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. And you say, oh, 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 pastor, you trying to say those people didn't have enough faith? I don't know, amen, whether they had enough faith or not, but I know, amen, that my, my work here isn't done yet, amen, so I'm going to continue until I finish what the Spirit of God put on the inside of me. If they wanted to check out and go home, that's on them. Amen? I'm not ready to go home. Amen? I'm ready to go home when I finish everything that God has placed on the inside of me. And that ought to be your confession of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look at um, verse, uh, verse 4. A soldier on duty doesn't get caught up in making deals at the marketplace. He concentrates on carrying out orders. Amen. What happens is that we want to deal in the marketplace. And again, relationships. We need to watch relationships. Amen? You know what ends up happening? People say, oh, you know what happens with relationships? The reason that they go wrong is because people get too close. No, that's not the reason why. The reason that you get into bad relationships, amen, is you, because you get into the wrong relationships. You don't allow the Holy Spirit to tell you who you need to relate to and who you need to spend time with. You just... Make the decision on your own. Well, that person seems really nice. Yeah, but is that a good person, amen, for you to have a good relationship with? Oh, this, this person dresses nice. He looks like he, okay. Look, okay ain't good enough. And that's sometimes what, how we get. And that's one of the things, amen, that, that get us caught up, amen. And, and, and now what happens is instead of us, amen, being in the service of what Christ has called us into, we can because we're caught up with things in the world. We're entangled with the things in the world. Amen. And God doesn't want us to be entangled with the things of the world, with the civilian life. Now, there's certain things that we need to take care of in the world. But the most important thing is fulfilling the calling that God has called us into in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I just want to say this in close. He who desires, amen, peace should be prepared for war. Because we're in a warfare in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you received anything, give glory to God. As always.